Good evening. Well, since I've been here, I've seen a lot of Gideons packed into an elevator. I've seen a lot of Gideons in the lobby, but this is by far the most Gideons I've ever seen in one room. This is an awesome thing. So as you know, my name is Gary Cardo, and what you don't know is that at one time I was held in bondage by crack, heroin, cocaine, and marijuana. But now I'm a new creation through Jesus Christ. Before July 27, 2002, I didn't believe in God. I didn't know who Jesus was, nor did I believe in the Bible. I lived a life of anarchy, stealing, lying, cheating, and drug use. I wasn't a good person. I could not look anyone in the eye, including my closest friends and family. I had been using heroin for about 10 months off and on. I tried to kick my habit over and over, but never got anywhere because I refused to change the company I kept. At one point, my life was waking up sick every morning and needing a fix. Then one day it all changed. It was the morning of July 27, 2002. I had this bright idea to steal my girlfriend's jewelry and sell it. I went to a place nearby that I had done business with before to get the quick cash that I needed. The owner of the shop didn't buy the jewelry from me, and I went home with what I went there with. But I went home with something extra. The owner, Linda, blessed me with a Gideon Bible. I guess she could tell that there was something wrong with me, and she told me that Jesus loved me, and he died for me. I remember walking out of the store thinking Linda was nuts and wondering what the heck she was talking about, but for some reason, I suddenly felt like there was an answer, and little did I know the seed had been planted. When I went home, I just sat and thought about what she had told me. I opened up the Bible that she had given me. I remember very clearly when my girlfriend came home, she said to me, where did you get that? And I told her, of course, leaving out the part about the jewelry. Her response was, what do you think? That's gonna solve all our problems? I began telling her about my conversation with Linda. Within a couple days, we decided that we should begin to go to church on Sundays. So our first Sunday, we attempted to go to three different churches. The first one hadn't reopened after renovations, the second had finished service already, and the third was in the middle of it by the time we had gotten there. We went home and tried again a few weeks later. Little did I know I had gotten the adversary's attention and he was diligently working on me. He couldn't let me go, not without a battle. The following week, we decided to go to, go to church in my hometown. We finally got to church on time and began going on a regular basis. We kept attending church. Eventually, I managed to get back on methadone. This time, it was for a six-month cycle. That would have worked great for me, except, again, I failed to change the company I kept. This progressed into me shooting up cocaine instead of heroin. Because I was unable to pass random tests given by the clinic, they lowered my dosage daily. In time, I, began, I started smoking crack. My girlfriend had found an apartment for her and her daughter and didn't want to be with me like I was. I was depressed and I appeared suicidal to others. I was arrested and finally went to jail, which is where I hit rock bottom. I couldn't even call my girlfriend because the previous week I had used the phone bill money to get high, which resulted in the phone getting shut off. At this time, I want to ask everyone to take note that the whole time this is going on, that little Bible was in my pocket that Linda had given me almost six months earlier. I don't know what I was thinking, maybe that I would gain understanding through osmosis, but I had it on me when I got arrested. And when I got to jail is when I finally opened that little Bible and began reading its contents. After about a week of being in jail, I found the courage to explain to my parents and my girlfriend that I was a drug addict. After almost a month in jail, my mom and dad found a Christian discipleship program for me to attend. It was a 15-month program. On January 23, 2003, I went to court and the judge approved me to the program instead of staying in jail. I received my salvation on April 15, 2003 at Calvary Life Christian Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. The sponsoring church of, the, of Turning Point Christian Center, the program I was enrolled in. I was baptized there three months later. My life has been fully restored. In fact, the Lord has not stopped blessing me. My relationship with my mother and father is excellent. excellent. And actually, I wouldn't have made it this far without their love and support. My girlfriend, whom I spoke of earlier, stuck with me through all this turmoil and became quite the woman of God that I needed in my life. And on April 30th, 2004, she became my wife. Believe it or not, I still have that little Bible that Linda had given me almost five years ago. 
I truly thank God for putting her in my path. She, was, she is a very powerful woman, and I hope she continues to plant these seeds. I ended up going through eight months of an extremely difficult Christian program, and God balanced me off with another four months in a secular program. I graduated on March 3rd, 2004. Since then, I've made many new Christian friends. I bought a house in a Christian community in Willimantic, Connecticut, and I was ordained into ministry and played an integral part on the servant team at Calvary Chapel in Willimantic, Connecticut. I also apprenticed during a church plant under Pastor Bill Lamore at Calvary Fellowship of Greater Hartford, where I was also in charge of service oversight. Not to mention the numerous people I have led to Christ, some family, some friends, and once even an old drug dealer. I've baptized over 20 people in the last three years under the oversight of my mentors, including my sister, my 15-year-old daughter, and most recently, my wife. Also, last May, I officiated my cousin's wedding. It was a true testimony to my unsaved family to genuinely see the work that God has done in my life. I'm currently employed by Micro Precision Machine Group of Wyndham, Connecticut, where I work as a CNC machinist. I plan to begin working toward a manufacturing engineering degree this fall. There's so many blessings in my life, I can't, can't begin to name them all. But the most awesome blessing that the Lord has given me is that back in last June, we found out that my wife was pregnant. And let me assure you that since I've been a Christian, my life has been everything but normal. So it was no surprise to me that one month later, we found out that we we're having triplets. <laughs> So on January 10th, 2007, my wife gave birth to one handsome little boy named Micah and two beautiful little girls named Alexandria and Cassandra. My brothers and sisters, before we part way today, it's imperative to me that you know and understand that I would not be standing here before you if it was not for the grace of God, the diligence of the Gideons, and the love of Linda Hansen. Thank you and God bless.